I'm sorry about that, little interruption, brothers and sisters. Let's continue, because this is a good word. Now, we were just talking, uh, we were on James 1.18, talking about how James said, so that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. Among his creatures. Oh, I'm, let me hit tools on that. That just brought something to my mind. Is this another? We already know our animals are going to heaven. Among his creatures, which is katesma, kisma, katisma, kate, katisma, katisma. Okay, it means creature, thing founded, created thing. It's clearly not human. So we're a kind of first fruits among his creation. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, let's get back to, let me get rid of that. Wow, that is so cool. Here's another scripture to back that up. James 1, 18. Okay. This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness in humility receive the word implanted which is able to save your souls now remember he's talking to the 12 tribes that were scattered so is he talking to the lost tribes I don't think so. My poor dog. I bathed him and he's still scratching. He had fleas bad. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness. So he knows that people... Being people will still have, after they're born again, problems with filthiness and wickedness. In humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. But prove yourselves doers of the word, not merely hearers. Who delude themselves no matter what you read don't be just a hearer or a reader be a doer of the word that's very important that's part of what Jesus said he who loves me obeys my commands well his word this whole New Testament is his commands for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. That dog may be allergic to that shampoo. He's scratching everywhere. I hope not. Sorry, Lord. Getting distracted over here. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and for once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. Now, can you imagine that? Looking in a mirror, checking yourself out. Hair looks good. Face looks fine. My mustache is right. Or for women, it might be, oh, got the makeup on good for today. You know, whatever. And you turn and go out the door and you're like, 
what do I look like? I don't even know what I look like. You forgot what kind of person you were. That's really kind of a weird scenario, in my opinion, <laughs> that he used. But it, it does prove a point. I mean, can you imagine having such a memory that you would forget what kind of person you were? Okay, but one who looks intently. Now listen to this. One who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. The law of liberty. See all the Jews. He's writing to all the Jews, the 12 tribes that are saved, born again, accepted Jesus. He's saying, don't go back to be Coming a keeper of the law, circumcising your boys, trying to have sacrificing uh, for sins or um, having to keep the Sabbath. I know many people say the Lord told them to keep the Sabbath. Well, if you believe the Lord told you to keep the Sabbath, then you go right ahead. But Paul is teaching the law of liberty, and he said, <clears throat> now remember, he is talking to the 12 tribes, the lost <coughs> 12 tribes. And he is telling them, remember the law of liberty. It is the perfect law. How can you argue with that? So, don't put an extra burden on yourself to, to, to keep all the feast days. If you want to, and you can do it, you can afford to go buy lamb and, and all the stuff that you would need for each feast day, and you had people to celebrate it with, great. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> You can if you want. You have the liberty to do it if you want to. But you aren't to condemn anyone else for not. If anyone thinks himself to be religious and yet does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. So I guess... We should bridle our tongue when it comes to judging others about whether they keep the Sabbath or not. If you want to, go ahead. If you don't and you make it public, don't comment on their comment and say, you got to keep the Sabbath. That's an Old Testament command. And Jesus made it clear by starting off small picking grains of wheat, having his apostles pick the grains of wheat with him, and they ate them. They considered that like harvesting, like that's really a, a crime. They considered that a crime, that he was breaking the Sabbath day. And then what else did he do? He healed people in the synagogue on the Sabbath to show what he could do, to try to prove to them he was the son of man. That he wasn't just any ordinary Joe that walked in there trying to speak to them. They were more willing to listen to him. A lot of Jews converted. That's why James is writing to them. All right, so if you can't keep your tongue bridled, your religion is worthless. That's some pretty tough words. Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows 
in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Now, the only way most of us can stay unstained is by repenting when we mess up. I cuz it says in the Bible there is none perfect, no not one. There's there's nobody who has not sinned. If you say you have not sinned, you are a liar. That's what the word says. So we all know we mess up in some way or another. And Jesus promised to forgive us our sins if we are faithful and just to confess our sins. If How's it go? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So just imagine every night that you pray, Father, please forgive me for whatever, 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 or for whatever I did today that might have grieved you or the Lord Jesus or the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm genuinely sorry. If there's anything you need to deal with me about, let me know. If you don't know what you did wrong that day, sometimes we do things without even thinking that that it's wrong. And he might lay it on your heart. He should if you're truly asking to be corrected. Because when he corrects us, it's always a gentle nudge. It's not going to come through a person berating you. Okay? So remember that. We just got to keep ourselves unstained by the world. I'm going to end this here by pleading the blood of Jesus over myself, my computer, my internet connection. Uh, that this will upload. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you, your devices, and your internet connections. With that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.